And welcome everyone, thank you very much for joining me on my latest episode on my channel. It's a pleasure to meet you if you're a new subscriber and if you're a new viewer of my channel. Yeah, just a quick one on your social media. If you see me, if you go on my page on this channel, it, on the top right, it should be like a Facebook, Instagram and a Twitter. So if you follow them or if you like or whatever, so just so you can keep up to date on all the latest episodes. And if you've subscribed, just click on the, the little bell sign on the next subscribe button. Just so, because YouTube does this sometimes. Even when I'm subscribed to YouTubers and probably use as well. You just make just to make sure that you get the video. Because sometimes it doesn't notificate, notify you when a video comes through on YouTube. So just hit that notification button and it'd be very much appreciated. The three stories I'll be talking about. Jürgen Klopp. He's talked about, about the youngsters and how this season is very important for their developments in the next coming season. Stevie G, he's talked a bit about what we need in the squad for the upcoming season and for us challenging the Champions League. And a bit about Mbappe, Matip. Mbappe, he's just talked, not he hasn't talked, but there's rumours coming out of his next destination. And the final one is Liverpool. That'd be a more in-depth one. It's Liverpool's Champions League. And let's click on it. The, um, the rules have changed and they're apparently going to affect us. That's in, that's from the Liverpool echo. Yeah, Liverpool's Champions League squad, how UEFA rules will affect Jürgen Klopp's selection in the coming season. So yeah, let's get started. Klopp's challenge youngsters. Klopp challenges youngsters to take the next step in their Liverpool career. As quoted on the Liverpool website, Jürgen Klopp has urged Liverpool youngsters to maintain the upwards trajectory on their development following a promising 2016-2017 season. Trent, Alexander-Arnold, Ben Woodburn, Ajaria, Harry Wilson all made their competitive debuts for the Reds in the first team during last season. While 17-year-old striker Brewster played in Klopp's side in their post-season friendly with Sydney FC, that was a couple of weeks back. He looked alright, I don't want to see him. Let me know if you've seen uh, Brewster play. But whilst acknowledging the academy prospects' impressive progress over the last 12 months, the manager has challenged them to keep working hard in order to maximise their rich potential. The Klopp is quoted on the LiverpoolFC.com. The boys did really well, but they all have to improve, Klopp said. They have to go from being really skilled kids to being players that you have to use. That's the next step. Look at Brewster. Everyone knows about his talents. It's fantastic. But Ben is a step ahead of him. Obviously Ben would Ben. And sometimes and sometimes and someone like Trent is already another step ahead already of obviously he's talking about Ben Woodburn. Trent Alexander. It's gonna be a, he's ahead of Ben Woodburn. It's cool and good to hear. I love it when Klopp uses cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah, when, when I'm reading that, I can just hear Klopp, as you can you can probably hear him. You see so many press conferences. He's a cool fella, Klopp. But yeah, he's just talked a bit about what they on the Liverpool website today. It is, isn't it? Because especially if we're going to be bringing in quality players and players that they're going to improve this team, there's going to be less space on the bench. But as Klopp said, they, he, it's the, the step in really in which young players need to make in their development for any team. But as I've always said, as soon as Jürgen Klopp come through that door, if I was a Liverpool academy player, I'd be like, wow. Because Klopp is world-renowned for for all the youngsters. Just look at the Bruce Jones team and the Mainz the youngsters that he brought through. They, they've got a big opportunity, the lads at Liverpool. And it's the best time if you're a Liverpool academy player or if you're a young kid like Ben Woodburn and uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold. You, you've got Jürgen Klopp there as a manager, but he was just talking about, about there, just talking about their next step in the development. I'll leave that story in the comments in the drop down, so check that out. LFC coach. It's weird to see Jedha being a coach now, isn't it? Where we need to buy so we can win the title. Gerard, Liverpool under 18 coach and former captain Stephen Gerard has discussed our chances of Premier League glory and the players we need to sign to make it happen. According to Gerard, we already we're already pretty close, having finished fourth in 2016-17 and beaten our rivals on multiple occasions. Gerard is quoted as saying, I think we've got a fantastic manager at the helm who will hopefully attract a few big names to complete the jigsaw, he told the SPN. I think Liverpool are very, very close. And if you look at the st statistics of the top six teams from last season, they were the best, best team to come out on top. 
So Liverpool know where they need to improve and it's the consistency against the teams in the bottom half of the table. The teams that sit narrow, compact and difficult to break down. So it goes on to say Gerard in a lot more. Hopefully we can get the two thing, two or three pieces of the jigsaw that are missing. And I'm really confident that Liverpool can keep moving forward and there will be a success just around the corner. I think we need someone in the left back position. James has done a fantastic job out there, but it would be nice to have another option out there as well, Gerard stated. And maybe have one more attacking player to give some more firepower and help unlock the defences that really narrow and compact. I don't think we need a major reconstruction. I think it's just a couple of pieces of the jigsaw left. And I think I'm really happy with the, what there is at the moment. So yeah, that's... That Gerard is completely right. There's not much. It's just filling in the gaps in this team. There's already a very good underbelly. That was a fantastic interview, by the way, as well. Um, just check that out. By Stevie. It's mad to think he's an under-18 coach. But yeah, talking about jigsaws. Left-back, striker, centre-back. Goalkeepers maybe have got a question mark over it. Centre-mid, box-to-box. We've already mentioned in a couple of videos back. But what I want you all to do and I'll be coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'll be doing an evaluation, and we can all get involved. But leave, make sure you create your starting 11, and do your bench with potential incomings. That's what I want to see in, the, in, the, in this video, in the comments section. So leave, obviously, do your goalkeeper, and then see your striker. Any formation, but state the formation, and like pick your 11 in order from like, uh, right back and then to left. You know how to do it. Obvious. Um, so yeah, do your start 11 and then your, your bench. I don't know how many bench. So say five. And then, so state that. And I'll talk about that in the coming next couple of episodes. But yeah, thank you very much, Stevie, lad. It's mad, it's amazing that he's an under-18s coach. And with Jürgen Klopp talking about their, um, the last story, the youngsters need to take their chance. And wow, you've got Gerard as the under-18 coach. What more can he ask for? You've got Jürgen Klopp as the manager of the actual first team. And you got Steven Gerrard. And they're younger than me. And they're getting taught. They, they all know who Steven Gerrard is. Everyone in the world football does. That would be truly amazing. They'd look, they've looked up to him for all the years. I'd, I wish I was getting taught by Steven Gerrard how to play football. I'm not that good at football. But, uh, <laughs> but let me know. That, how, how, how amazing. Let me know how amazing you think that is. Would you have loved to have been taught football at the under-18 level? That would be truly amazing. But yeah, going into the Mbappe news. It's not a lot here, but it's quoted in this story that he's he's meant to have decided his future uh, at Real Madrid. This has come about, obviously, he talked about a couple of weeks back. It might be Liverpool. We were meant to have been linked to Mbappe from the stories coming out of it. It's because the Ronaldo news has come out this week that Ronaldo is meant to have talked and said he wants to leave and there's some other stories saying that he hasn't and in the Portuguese camp while he's away. It's mad how, how much rubbish or speculation happens when you're away with your mates in the international team but Ronaldo is meant to be leaving Real and the looking, the Galacticos, uh, the Galacticos are looking at maybe getting Mbappe. The money that Real Madrid have, they might as well get, because I don't know how much. Let me know how you, how much, even though it's Real Madrid, but how much do you think, leave in the comment section, how much Ronaldo will go for. If he does leave, how much do you think he'll go for at the end of the season? For me, it'd be about 125 million. I might be completely off the final budget, but Pogba's going for around 80 to 100 million. Ronaldo is worth a lot more. But yeah, let me know. That's Mbappe. So he's looking like he's going to Real Madrid. So watch this space. Pray we he comes to us, but <laughs> highly unlikely. But if we did, wow. We're, all of us would go to bed crossing our fingers, crossing our toes, crossing everything if Mbappe actually come, come to us. But yeah, that was just a quick story on Mbappe. And right, this is a little bit long one in, from coming from the Echo. I'm going to do a bit of it, but defo check this out in, in regards to this story. Liverpool Champions League squad, how your wafer rules will affect Jürgen Klopp's selection. Liverpool turn to Europa, Europa, no, Europe's top table when next season starts. That means Jürgen Klopp will have a decision to make at the end of the transfer window. Who will be his Champions League in his Champions League squad? For the Reds to reach the group stage in the Champions League, they obviously have to play through two qualifying rounds. So it goes on to say, 
Clubs don't need to confirm their full squad for the Euro European champ campaign until the transfer window closes, but there are a couple of rules they need to follow. Champions League squad rules. According to UEFA.com, every club must submit two lists of players to the FA by an, an official UEFA deadline, whether they're in the Champions League or the Europa. The deadline for this year's is still to be announced. The list, which includes squad numbers, will be verified, vindicated and forwarded to UEFA by the FA before each club's European squad is published. What is a list A player? According to UEFA, a maximum of 25 players, including a minimum of two goalkeepers, can be registered to the list. Eight places on the list are reserved for lo locally trained players. If a club cannot count on the services of at least two goalkeepers registered on a list A because of long-term injury or illness, they can select a temporary replacement. UEFA say that if a club has fewer than eight local trained players in their squad, then the minimum number of players on the list A, which is this one, is reduced accordingly. That's very interesting. A locally trained player falls into two categories. Ca category 1, 1A, a club trained player. This is a player who has been on the club's books from, for three years between age 15 to 21. Number 2, associated trained player. This is a player who were on the books for another club for three years between the age of 15 and 21. No club should not have more than four associated association trained players amongst their eight nominees on list A. So what is a list B player? UEFA say that player can be registered as a list B if he's born or after January 1st, 1996, and has been eligible to play for the club. That's interesting. So I'll leave the rest of the story down below. So obviously, in the club, that one I've just mentioned, they can make, if any teams get anyone into the chip last 16, they can make changes to that squad. If, I don't know if it affects the January transfer window, but if we brought in a couple of players, and oh, I don't know if you'll be able to register, it might be completely off, and the that list and where you have to submit it is probably before then. But yeah, that's really interesting. That's It's more in depth anyway. So go and check that out. It's from the Liverpool Echo about Liverpool's squad listings and the, the changes really this, this season's. But yeah, that it doesn't be much today. But thank you very much everyone for checking out. So fingers crossed, hopefully the Salah deal is very, very imminent. Hopefully we are sorting tomorrow. It was meant to the medical, as I mentioned in a couple of videos back. It's meant to be getting planned tomorrow, but we'll watch that. See what's happening. Next future video, I'm going to be doing an FSG. It's not going to be FSG in or out. It's just my feelings on how, really, this season is very much important in the window and how it really is defined. Of It's one of FSG's most important seasons of being the owners of Liverpool Football Club. So keep an eye out for that. And if you've got any suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comment section. You all know what to do by now. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Wherever you are in the world, have a quality day. You'll never walk alone. And I'll speak to you very soon. All the best, everyone. Ciao.